electron configuration is another way of doing um, the address for the electron. Electron configuration just uses numbers and letters. Um, the big number is still the energy level. And then you have your sublevel, your S, P, D, or F. And then you have an exponent. And the exponent shows how many electrons are there. So it's a total count. It's not showing them individually. All right, so if we look at boron, boron has five protons, so it has five electrons. Alphabas principle states lowest energy level first. So 1s. The s sublevel has one orbital and can hold two electrons. Next will come 2s. The s sublevel has one orbital and can hold two electrons. Then would come 2p. The p sublevel has three orbitals. I only have one electron left though, so it doesn't matter which orbital I choose. So that was your orbital notation. Electron configuration is taking this and putting it in shorthand. So we have 1s two electrons there, so we're going to say 1s2. 2s2 and 2p1, because I only have one electron in the 2p. So something that might be useful doing this is to say that the s sublevel can hold a maximum of two electrons, because it has one orbital. The p sublevel can hold a max of two, four, six electrons. The D sublevel can hold a max of ten electrons because it has five orbitals. And then the F can hold a maximum of fourteen electrons because it has seven orbitals. So you don't necessarily need to do the orbital notation in order to get the electron configuration. If you just add up exponents, you should be able to keep track of your electrons. 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. So if we look at fluorine, fluorine has 9 electrons. Lowest energy level would be 1s. Each s can hold a maximum of 2 electrons. Then would come 2s. s can hold a maximum of 2 electrons. Then would come 2p. p can hold a maximum of 6 electrons. I only need nine electrons though, and right now I've taken care of four, so I only have five electrons left. So those five electrons would go in the 2p. If we look at nickel, nickel has 28 electrons, or 28 protons, so it has 28 electrons. So we would say 1s, s can hold two. That's two electrons, I need 28. 2s, s can hold 2. Now I'm up to 4 electrons. 2p, a p can hold 6. I'm at 4 electrons trying to get to 28, so I'm going to put all 6 in there. So now I'm up to 10. After 2p is 3s, s can hold a maximum of 2. Now I'm up to 12. After 3s is 3p. 3p can hold a maximum of 6. Now I'm up to 18 electrons trying to get to 28. After 3p, I have 4s. Don't forget about that change there. s can hold a maximum of 2, so now I'm up to 20. I have 8 more electrons to go. After 4s would be 3d. d can hold a maximum of 10 electrons, but I only have 8 electrons left, so all 8 can go in the 3d. Um, if we do uh, krypton, krypton has 36 electrons. So again, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, I'm up to 10 electrons, 3s2, 3p6, I'm up to 18, 4s2 puts me at 20. So I have 16 more electrons to go. The 3D can only hold 10 electrons. Now I have 6 more electrons to go. After the 3D is 4P. P can hold a maximum of 6, and I have 6 left. So all 6 can go in the 4P. Noble gas configuration takes our 
electron configuration and shortens it even more. So noble gas notation uses the noble gases. Noble gases are in group 18. They're considered stable because they have eight um, valence electrons and helium has two, which fills their outermost shell. So we can use them as a starting point instead of having to write down everything that has already been filled. So let's look at an example. Um, if we look at phosphorus, phosphorus has 15 electrons. So the electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. The noble gas that comes before phosphorus is neon. Neon's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So neon is taking care of all of this for us. So we can just simply put neon. Knowing that the row phosphorus is in is the highest energy level, I know that I'm going to start in the third energy level. Neon has 10 electrons. Phosphorus has 15, so I just need five more electrons to show. So I would say 3s2, 3p3. Okay, if we look at another element, let's look at calcium. Calcium has 20 electrons. The noble gas that comes before calcium is argon. So in brackets, I would write argon. Argon has 18 electrons. Calcium has 20. So I only need to show two more electrons. Calcium is in row 4, so I know I'm going to start at 4s. And the s can hold the two extra electrons of calcium. If we look at arsenic, arsenic has 33 electrons. The noble gas that comes before arsenic, again, is argon. Arsenic is in row 4, so I know I have to start off at 4s. 4s can only hold two electrons, though. So after the 4s is filled, then we pick, go back and pick up the 3d. D can hold 10 electrons. I have three more electrons to show for arsenic, 18 plus 2 plus 10. So after the, 4, uh, after the 3d would come 4p. p can hold up to six electrons, but only have three more to get to 33. Valence electrons are our outermost electrons. So they're the ones that we would write on the outermost circle if we were doing a Bohr's model diagram. The electron dot diagram uses the symbol and dots to show the number of valence electrons. So you have the symbol of the element, and then the dot represents valence electrons. So if we look at nitrogen, nitrogen has seven electrons. The noble gas that comes before nitrogen is helium, so that takes care of two of my electrons. Nitrogen is on row two, so I know I need to start at 2s. So I have two already. The s can hold a maximum of two, so I have four electrons. After 2s comes 2p, and that's where I'd put my remaining three. So the outermost energy level is two, and the total number of electrons, 2 plus 3, is 5. So I have 5 valence electrons. So I'm going to take my nitrogen, and I'm going to put one dot on each side of my nitrogen. I have one more valence electron so I can pair up. So it's one on each side before you pair. If we do another example, let's look at sulfur. Sulfur has 16 electrons. So if you take the noble gas that comes before sulfur, which is neon, that takes care of 10 electrons, and we need six more. Sulfur is on row three, so I know I have to start at 3s, 2, and then 3p, 4. So 2 plus 4 gives me six valence electrons. So I take my symbol for sulfur, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six. Okay, if we look at another example, let's look at iron. 
iron is element 26, so we have 26 electrons. The noble gas that comes before iron is argon. So I need eight more electrons. Iron is in row four, so I would do 4s2, then 3d6. Here you need to be careful. The highest energy level is actually four, not three. So iron only has two valence electrons. So we would say Fe with two dots. There is a quicker way of figuring this out. Valence electrons happen to also be the last digit in the group number. And there's two exceptions. And that would be groups 3 through 12, which we call the D block, and helium. Groups 3 through 12 and helium only have two valence electrons. And we saw that with our iron, because we're going to fill that 4s and the 3D doesn't count. Ne uh, nitrogen is in group 15, so it had five valence electrons. Sulfur is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. If we look at oxygen, oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, potassium is in group one, so it has one valence electron. Zinc is in group 12. Well, group 12 is one of my exceptions, so zinc has two electrons. Argon is in group 18, so it has eight valence electrons. Eight valence electrons is the total. That's the most that you can possibly have. You cannot have more than eight valence electrons. So if you think that the element has more than eight, something's wrong.